Need the 50th year of the club, you go and win a first county title for 30 years at senior level. How good was that? It was un unbelievable. Um, I suppose at the start of the year, you know, we didn't really, you know, we had our targets, we had our goals, but um, I suppose if someone had said to us, you know, that you'd be county champions, a few of us would have probably said, oh, no. But um, to, as the year went on, I suppose, and kind of we picked up momentum and the belief started to set in and, you know, um, it just kind of just came from that really and to get there then and get the win over a quality team was, was even more special and I suppose as you said that, that bit of history that's involved with it and bridging the gap of 30 years was, it was, it was very special. In Iscara we're going for four in a row so I'd say expectations were fairly low from people outside of your camp. Yeah we definitely were underdogs going in and I suppose in a certain way it suited us you know um, we didn't have any pressure on us um, we knew they were quality sides. We've played played them a few times, and we've been on the losing end. Um, and so we just, we, I suppose that way was that was a good way to have it. We'd no, we'd no expectations. We just we we went in and as underdogs, and it suited us. Talk to me about half time because that was a sort of a, that was an interesting one, and I, I think some people would understand how this situation <laughs> would arise. But I'll let you explain it. <laughs> yeah, so I suppose at half time. Um, we had a great start to the match. We were up um, a few points, and then at half time we were down a point. Um, so we were in the dressing room, and I suppose the talking was going on, and I suppose that turns to a bit of shouting and a bit of roaring and, and the usual. And I happened to be in the toilet at the time, and it was just there was there was a mountain of shouting going on, and it just. I, I started laughing. I just it was kind of more of a a moment where you you either get really serious or or you laugh. And I suppose I just started kind of laughing away to myself, not at people, but just at the situation the awkwardness. and the awkward awkwardness. Laugh. Yeah, and I came out, and I suppose one of the other girls in the team that I know that that I'd be very close to, she she said she knew that it was. We kind of both clicked, and we both had a bit of a smile. And I suppose for me, then going out at half time it was the best thing because I wasn't you know it suits me as a player to kind of be calmer and uh, going out rather than being really pumped up or riled up you know so it was a funny one but it was just the way it worked out you kicked on anyway and like it, it, you've, you've a great little scenario there where you have a husband and a wife as the manager and the star player yeah. and that uh, probably that probably helped kick you, kick you on yeah, um, I suppose Emer has been for us. You know, she's she's idolised really by by many of us, um, and she's just she's she's unbelievable. She's been there for for years. She's been someone that we've all looked up to when we were younger, and as we've we've grown up and started playing with her, she's 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 like anyone's best buddy on the team. She's she's just she's amazing. And I suppose then to have the two of them, it, it is funny in training at times to hear them bouncing off each other. But um, it worked well. It was a great combination, and I suppose we had we had other outside other lads involved with us, and it, it all came together nicely. So Emer and Emmett Fennell, do you, Fennell, do you ever kind of slag them over the the husband wife scenario? Um, not really. We wouldn't. But they, to be fair, they they'd have a good slagging off each other every now and then, which would a bit which, of favoritism, surely. <laughs> no, the exact opposite. And she'd often say it herself. It's quite funny at times to be. She'd get the get the hair doing over us. So it is. It's funny at times. Yeah. So next up in the Munster Championship then is Drummond Inch. I suppose the country would have expected Burgess to Harrow to come through because they have won so many tip titles. But yeah. you'll go up to play um, in, in the rag, I presume it's going to be on. It's actually at home. Oh, it's a it? home no. fixture. Oh, you yeah, have the advantage. Yeah, yeah we have the advantage. Um, so it, um, we've, we've Drummond Inch at home on Sunday, the Sunday coming. So um, I suppose, look, it's total new territory for us. We haven't gotten this far mm. in the camp. In We haven't been here before, so... Um, sure, we're just we we're just looking forward to it and giving it our best shot. Really, is is the main thing. Really. And you did play them already this year in the challenge match. Uh, we did. We did challenge match against them during the summer, um, and that was. Um, there was I w there was a few of us weren't playing um, and they had a few players not playing as well um, and we know from them they're a quality side I mean you know they've beaten the favourites they're 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 a very strong side so I suppose we we'll, we'll be definitely up against it and probably going in again as underdogs but that's just the way it is and we look forward to it on the day. So you'll have to cancel plans though to play that match, won't you? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, you must have been expecting to get to this stage. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. I suppose. 
because I didn't look ahead to the the fixtures um, for the club championship. I just didn't. Um, we were kind of a lot of us were hoping it would be on the Saturday, um, but it just didn't fall that way. So I might just have to um, amend a few flights, but uh, it'll be grand. You get to Alicante another day. <laughs> um, talk to me about Cork then this season. How uh, like semi final didn't go go to plan this year, but um, why did why did it not go to plan? Um, I suppose you we came up against a very strong Galway side. Um, we played them in the league earlier and we'd, we'd drawn with them. Um, and I suppose going into the game then, we were unfortunately carrying a few injuries. Um, people were, there was, there was those few injuries. So I suppose, um, but Galway were a quality side and went on to, to beat Kilkenny in a serious final. And, um, you know, there was, I suppose you, you, could, you could be picking at reasons and different things all day, but it was just, it was just the way it panned out on the day. They were the better side. Do you think you can kick or, you know, kind of bounce back next year? Oh, yeah, definitely. I suppose, look, every year is a new year and you start out again and you set your goals and, and, and you, you go from there. Um, so definitely it'll be, there'll be no, no trouble in bouncing back anyway, yeah. Do you, is, in terms of the playing rules, I hear a lot of players giving out about the, uh, the lack of shouldering because players now are so much more conditioned than they used to be. Is that something that would annoy you? Um, the lack of shouldering, is yeah, it? Yeah, that, that you get blown up for it. Um, yeah, I suppose um, there can be kind of uncertainty in a game whether, whether especially in Komogi, whether it's considered a shoulder or not. And sometimes you, the ref will blow for a free, sometimes it'll be left go. And I suppose that kind of inconsistency then at times is, it can be frustrating as a player. Um, sometimes it can, sometimes frees are left go, sometimes they're called against you. Um, and I suppose yes, as the game gets as weak, as players get stronger, as you said, strength and conditioning comes into play people get faster, I suppose the rules will, will certainly have to kind of adapt to that and, and become more suited maybe to the game as it progresses. Because this year was a very good Open All-Ireland Final. In 2018, it, it just seemed everyone was giving out about the, the officiating. Yeah, I suppose um, it, it kind of ruins it from a spectator's point of view. I mean, the game is stopping and starting, there's no flow to it. Um, and I suppose it then takes away from the work that we've done outside of it. You know, I suppose we've, we've, we play games we, where, you know, we're used to a free-flowing game and then you come up and, and play an all-earned final and a ref um, stops for for an awful lot of things and, and from a spectator's point of view it certainly isn't um, enjoyable so I suppose that's the only thing that you know it could definitely improve in that sense. And maybe a couple of other things do you think that they're getting rid of the being allowed to drop the hurley that that might help and then the other thing the hand pass goals? To get rid of it is it? Yeah to get rid of those rules because I don't know if they if they if they hold the game back a bit like I'm not sure it looks particularly good. <laughs> I suppose so, but uh, um, I suppose they're the rules that are implemented. And I suppose, like if you if you had said that to a girl who's bearing down on goal, who can't, can't who isn't going to hit the ball because she's going to be hooked or blocked, you know, the hand pass certainly is an effective way in Camogie of scoring mm. a goal. They got rid of it in her in about thirty five years ago. Now I I just think it, it doesn't look great. Like the hand pass goal, you should at least have to puck the ball once before it goes into the net. I suppose look, there's arguments for and against. Um, um, people would say, yeah, that it's it slows down the game because that if it, if it's in play and the girl has to go back and get her hurley and go again, yeah, certainly. But I suppose look, there's 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 pros and cons to it. Great stuff. Best of luck against Trump. Thanks very much.